Well, hello and welcome to this week's video here on the Restasaga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel, and we're back at the Toylander. Um, the thumbnail on the last Toylander update probably gave you a bit of a hint as to what we've been doing, and we've made great progress on the lacquering of the bodywork. Um, a lot of times we've been spent preparing the bodywork for paint, undercoating it, PVA glue sealing it, obviously not in that order, and then colour coating it. So we finally got on with the lacquer. Sorry for the boiler coming on in the background. So let's have a wee look around the bodywork and then I'm going to show you what I'm doing this week. So this is the body shell and as you'll notice the light is quite reflecting on it quite nicely which is showing you the lacquer. Um, this is the seat base which has lacquer but the seat back does not so you notice a bit of a difference in the gloss effect there. Um, coming on here you can get a nice reflection in the bodywork along those wings. Um, which I think is really quite impressive given the fact that this is plywood and I didn't really prepare the whole sides, really filled the top but not the sides because I didn't really want to start into all that. Um, so all of the exterior bodywork is lacquered um, including the, and the back rear tub. The floor is not done because I haven't tipped it up on its side yet um, but that doesn't really hugely important because there'll be a mat protecting that. Sorry for the boiler buzzing away in the background again. Up at the front, um, the grill and headlamps are in. Couldn't resist the temptation to give the Toylander a bit of a face. I also have the bumper extensions on, but you'll notice this one is sitting a little bit high. There's a bit of a gap in here, so this needs worked at to make sure this and this are level before we start manufacturing metalwork for the bumpers. Still need to get a bonnet, still haven't ordered that. Um, January's been a long month waiting for payday to come around again, so once I have, then I'll get the bonnet ordered. Um, inside here, seat base, um, black ready to um, replicate a seat and white or the cream for the back half of the seat base as well. Those are the tops of the uh, mud guards or the rear inner arches. I'll just set them in place so you can see, get the idea. It goes over there. Yes, there's a little bit of damage here, but there'll be a little metal filler plate there. See if I can get this all set in. This is the bottom of the windscreen, which is going to run along here once I bought the metalwork for that. And this is for the back of the seat, which is going to sit like that. But um, I'm really going for detail here, so the bottom half of this is going to be painted cream so that it matches the rest of the tub as it should in an actual Land Rover and the rest will remain black. So all looking very smart, but before I can do that I need hinges so I get all my measurements correct. So we'll keep that flat down. That sits across here at the base of the windscreen. Um, uh, I don't really know where those black marks come from, just noticing those now, so maybe got those out with a bit of sign fine sign fine sandpaper so body top looking really good um the rear cross members come out brilliantly the lacquer did sort of change the silver down to darker color but that's okay as long as it all matches in um slight problem is mrs resto saga was in tidying the garage which she, um was great because i have a bit more room to work but unfortunately the toy lander hit the floor so a bit of damage in this corner a bit of damage here as well and less so at the back so this is going to need taped off sanded and blown in again but should be fairly inconspicuous repair so let's take you over to see what i'm doing this week um here we are at the tailgate so four millimeter ply um cut down to size i actually bought this off ebay so i didn't want to buy an eight by four foot piece um, this is just the 12 mil marine ply framing and these are just cut from off cuts. I have a big box of off cuts up there. Um, so these are off cuts. So next job is to measure it all out, make sure it's all properly spaced. Screw from the back, obviously have to be careful because that's four mil of ply and 12 mil of ply here. 16 mil, I've been using longer screws so I'm gonna have to get slightly shorter screws. There's no point screw heads coming out. And then I'm gonna glue it, PVA it, and then paint, prime it, paint it, lacquer it. Every part has so much work to do to it, but this will be the end of the woodwork, I'm pretty sure, because um, 
I have to say, I'd be happy to see it go because I'm a bit fed up with all the cutting and mess because um, the garage is also a bit of a state as well. But I'm looking forward to moving on to the metalwork. The end is in sight. So let's get this all marked out, measured, screwed and glued and go from there. So here I am in my little assorted box of screws. We had a fitted bedroom that we took out a couple of years ago and I kept all the wood screws from it because you never know when these come in useful. But um, I have some nice short ones, as you can see here in the calipers. Um, the batteries run out, but you can still use them as calipers. Those are 14 and a half mil top to tail. So those I think will do nicely for screwing these together. Um, so let's see if we can pick out a couple of them, get them glued on it and then get some screws in. So, making some progress on the tailgate, um, the upper and lower reinforcement bits are on. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to countersink these, but it turns out you can. I suppose 4mm is probably still enough, because the countersink bit, which is here, is not particularly um, steep angle. So, um, countersink in, clamp, glue on, and then screw the screws in, and the little short screws seem to be doing their job. So I think we're winning. And there we have it. One tailgate finished. I'm quite pleased with this. Um, some of the joints are a little rough and there's a few wee edges, but I am going to have the eyes upon um, filler out again because if you look over here, let's move that up out of the way. Um, this being the front panel, it does need a little bit of correction. Some of these holes in the wrong place and so on. So that needs a bit of filler and I knew that anyway. So that needs filler and this needs a wee bit of filler as well. Round the back, not too bad. Um, this screw is out of alignment with these ones, which is slightly annoying, but I think with a little bit of skim of filler over the top and a nice sand down, it won't be too bad. But at the end of the day, it'll all be body colored and well covered in. So if we put this, I haven't done this, so this is, let's move the little tights car out of the way. That is going to sit in roughly there. I think that looks all right. Pretty pleased with that. Can't complain. Bit of sanding. Then get the hinges on it so I know where the screws are going in the right place. And then it'll need PVA sealed and then f filled probably. Then primed, colour coated and lacquered. And that'll be that last panel in. I think that's going to look very smart. So um, on the next bit, which is somewhere detailing on the bodywork. So a bit further on in this video, sorry about the mess of the garage. I had mentioned at the start about this um, little smash that the toy lander took here. Um, actually, it looks really bad to close up. Um, it does look better out in the daylight, but there you go. It's never going to be perfect, but it's pretty smart. Um, this little smash here, so I've taken this, the sanding block, tidied that up that edge. Um, continue that round here you can just see where I've rubbed the lacquer off there so I'm going to tape up this corner and I'm trying to work out how to do a nice tidy repair I might do a bit of research I think there's a technique where you can roll the paper back on itself so that you don't have a very definite edge whenever you go to repaint it I'm going to repaint probably a whole line across here and try and feather it in nicely if it's a mess I'll sand the wing down and just do it all again in one moving on up also sanded here that's also where it hit the ground and also tidied up a little bit here um, just to smarten up the whole thing this has been a bit of a dumping ground recently and I'm trying to resolve this I've ordered the hinges which as I said should arrive before the end of this video um, and get the painting well underway and it'll be on to making a windscreen frame getting the body all finished then I can put that down in storage so let's move on to the next phase, which is getting the tailgate filled um, and painted, really, I suppose. The next thing, I've already PVA'd it. I'll take you over here and show it to you. It's in safe storage, well up out of the way. You might be able to see a bit of a sheen on that from the, the PVA. So I'm gonna fill in, see those little cracks? They're not really cracks or screws or joints, but they all need filled with a bit of body filler, so it's a nice tidy job. So let's get that done and then get it painted and fit it once the hinges arrive. So as you can see, I've moved to the colour coat phase here on the tailgate. I PVA'd it, I filled it, um, it's, and I primed it, and now this is the colour coat and this is the back. 
and I ran into a bit of a problem, which I can demonstrate here at the hinges, which arrived in the post. Now, these are primed, but these little weird spots appeared. Now, um, these are called, uh, well, the effect is called fish eyeing. I'm not being racist, that's what the paint shop refers to it as. And that refers to silicone, which has landed on the metalwork. And the reason why is because I was oiling the locks of the Land Rover and there must have been overspray. So it happened here and also happened here. I've managed to fix it on here. You can just see it in the reflection in the sun or in the light there, but I've managed to cover it over. Um, I left it for a while, went over it with a wet wipe, a baby wipe really, let it dry off and then I've put a coat over the top. So that's been rescued and did the same to this and I think these will be able to be rescued as well. So two coats of primer, two coats of colour coat and then two coats of clear on both sides and that should be those done. Um, three different sizes of hinges here. The big ones are for the bonnet, the small ones are for the tailgate, the middle sized ones are for the seat here which hinges forward and back. So definitely getting there. Once the hinges are on I can get the finishing coats done on the seat and um, because I needed to measure my distances and I'll be able to explain that soon and then I'll get these metal edges on and bought, bought £30 worth. Um, so then that should be the body pretty much done. I also need to paint these little grooves here but let's get the painting done on this and we'll take it from there. So moving on to a further stage I have screwed down the rear wheel covers and I've purposely left these screw heads exposed mainly because those panels are not glued in they're screwed and have to be sort of removable these two here need to lift up slightly to let this panel this is all one slide out that way and now there's another screw there and another screw there the reason I've put this in is to put these hinges in so then I have the correct angle for the seat which then gives me my line to paint which is what I've done um, reason being I want to paint the lower half of the seat cream so it looks like a the correct like Land Rover tub and keep the top of it black now hinging this up and down has caused some black marks which is a wee bit annoying so I've had to sand this down flatter um, purely so it doesn't rub because that'll get really annoying over time. Um, this does hinge quite nice and freely if I rub that in there. That'll sit flat so if I want to drive it then I can just fold the flat and sit on the back of the seat whereas if my son is driving it then he can use it as a seat. Um, the, oh it looks quite shiny there actually with the light. That's getting lacquered at the minute. Um, made a bit of a stupid mistake with the hinges. Um, these hinges need bent slightly, mainly because the tailgate sits proud from the back. Remember, this is 12mm, that is 12mm plus 4mm, so it's 16 so it sits out 4mm proud. It should sit in a little bit, but I probably got my measurements wrong somewhere along the way, so I've bent these hinges, so the bottom half of these are going to need repainted. And if I put it down here, you can sort of see it's going to sit there-ish. I might actually get away with just painting it cream by the looks of things, which would be nice because I really don't want to have to paint it silver. Half and half, it would be a bit of a faff. And the hinges in here, I painted those cream by mistake, that was stupid, those are meant to be black. Um, so those have to be done. And then there's the other hinges. I don't really know where I've left those. Oh, yes, they're here. These are for the bonnet, those are definitely meant to be cream, so that's okay. These need another coat of lacquer, and then they're ready to go on. So doing okay. I um, really want to get the bonnet ordered actually now and then get the metal finishers round and then we'll be good to go but one step at a time. So I think that's a good place to sign this video off. As you can hear Storm Dance is growing here in the UK. I have lots more painting to be done. I'm very thankful for my nice dry garage that is quite well ventilated despite the doors being closed. So I'm going to get all these components painted and finished off and then we'll get them fitted and that will probably be in the next episode. So once again, thanks very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button down there below the screen. Give me a like and fire me a comment. I'm always happy to hear from you and I reply to every single one of the comments I receive. So thanks very much for watching once again and we'll catch you again next week. Cheerio.